Hey there folks, Rel here. Today we're going to be going over some extreme basics when it comes to handling your Empire specific fighters or ESF. The goal at the end of this will be to give you some tips to help fuel your own practice of learning how to fly. I've also linked some other helpful channels in the video description below if you're interested. Plenty of knowledge there that comes from players with far more experience than myself. That said, each faction's Empire specific fighter has different strengths and weaknesses. The new conglomerate's Reaver has a more powerful vertical thrust and can afterburn for longer. The Vanu Sovereignty's Scythe hovers and air brakes a little bit better, and the Terran Republic's Mosquito is faster than the other two. They all handle differently than one another and they all have different hitboxes and weapon strengths and weaknesses, but that's all stuff that you'll figure out as you go. Most guides will tell you to go to the VR training room and practice, 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 and it's true, you should, especially if you don't understand the absolute basics of how to make the thing go. But when it comes to the live game, here are some things you can think about. Empire specific fighters cost 350 resources to pull. If your faction has locked down Indar, then you'll also receive 50% off of aerospace resources, which means 175 resources to pull. By default, you rake in 50 resources per tick, with more if you're running a boost or a membership. Add 50 resources per tick, and if you aren't using any resources on your infantry loadout, you can pull an ESF once every 7 minutes. If you want to save your resources, make yourself a pilot loadout that you use for flying. Basically, just make an infantry class that has removed its grenade and utility slot item. Many people will fly as light assault just to avoid dying or hopefully to continue the fight on the ground, but if you're focused on learning how to fly and becoming more proficient at vehicle combat in general, you should be doing it as an engineer. Flying as an engineer is a good practice as a newer player because you will likely not have a lot of points invested into your ESF just yet, let alone invested into your nanite auto repair. That means a really long time waiting for your ESF to repair itself mid-flight and a higher risk of death because of it. Flying as an engineer will also help get you into the mindset of knowing when you should retreat and repair, which is useful for all vehicles, not just the ESF. As far as your loadout is concerned, keep your standard weapons. Maybe throw a 1.25 times zoom on it for one certification, and put a certification into the first rank of bonus ammo as well. But beyond that, don't worry too much about your weapon. You will, however, want to invest in your afterburner fuel tanks, an engagement radar, and nanite auto repair. Chassis are important too, but it's a pretty hefty investment that'll change the aircraft in a way that you may not actually understand or may not actually help you, so I really wouldn't bother with them until you've got at least the basics of flight down. Fuel tanks are important because you're going to be doing a lot of running away and a lot of maneuvering. Air-to-air -air missiles, coyote rockets, those are really gimmicks in the scheme of things. They'll probably help you rack up a kill or two with each life, but they're not going to teach you how to fly any better. Engagement radar, however, is very important. Awareness is a skill that you'll learn over time, but you won't learn anything if you just keep dying over and over without being able to find out where the enemy came from or how to deal with them. Engagement radar will give you the positions of nearby enemy aircraft so that you can learn to make smarter engagements. When you get better, more options will open to you, but engagement radar will always be useful in more ways than one. If you have the certifications, I would advise capping this out as soon as possible because it becomes much, much, much more useful at max rank and it won't cost you a whole lot in the process. Nanite auto repair is useful to have even if it's rank 1 because some healing is better than no healing and the lower ranks of composite armor or stealth will be next to useless to you. Now that we've gotten the loadouts out of the way, here are some techniques to give you a bit more survivability as you learn to handle your ESF in a live environment. The first thing that we're going to want to do is make a waypoint on a safe location, and a lot of times this is just your warp gate. This waypoint is where we're going to retreat to every time we get into a fight that's a bit out of our league. If you see one lone ESF, feel free to challenge them, but galaxies, liberators, ground vehicles, basically anything that's not a single ESF, just ignore it and stay away from them. Engagement radar will make it much easier to do this. Flying with a friend or supporting allied ESF is also a good idea, and if nothing else, they'll help draw fire for you, but having a wingman will help you explore a little bit further from home and will certainly up your survivability in the process. Speaking of, make it a point to fly in zones where your faction has the upper hand, so that's a nice front line or even an overpopped hex, but you do want to try to stay away from contested hexes where there are a lot of players trying to defend their base especially in tower fights and tech plant fights, as those two are the most likely to have anti-air standing by to ruin your day. Having a lot of allies in an area is helpful for covering you against enemy aircraft, 
so try to hang around in their general airspace if possible. Don't go so far as to rely on them saving you, but allies can serve as a way to soften up targets for you and ward off pursuers. With every engagement that you enter into, you want to be at full health. So when you take damage, you have a couple of options. The first is to fly back to your safe point, and the second is to land in repair. When landing to repair, it's helpful to find a place that's out of sight and out of mind from enemies. And your engagement radar will help you with this, but engagement radar doesn't let you know what's going on on the ground. So be sure to listen and pay attention to who may be looking for an easy kill, and be sure to bug out as soon as trouble approaches. When you engage on a target, you want to be as close as possible to them before opening up with your nose gun. It will usually take the enemy a moment to react, especially if you caught them trying to kill ground targets. This means more damage done, which instantly puts the fight in your favor. If you plink at a target from range, they'll see that they're taking some damage and be able to run away from you before you can really dish out any hurt. One thing I should probably stress a little bit more is when you should be running away from fights. There's no harm in dying, especially if you've gotten the resources for another ESF all lined up anyway, but knowing when you're outmatched is an important skill to have. A good guideline to follow is that if an enemy ESF gets the jump on you, or if you have more than one enemy nearby, or if you initiate on an ESF but don't inflict a lot of damage before they start to turn around and dish out their own, or if you've taken a substantial amount of damage. In all of those situations, you want to create some distance. Sometimes this will mean just turning to your waypoint, hammering on the thrusters, and flying all the way back to your safe zone. And other times it'll mean just making enough space so that enemies forget about you. But either way, don't be afraid to run. Survival is the name of the game when it comes to learning how to fly. Some last tips that I want to end here with are that you want to try to save your afterburners as often as possible. Much like entering a fight with full health, a full bar of boosters is going to help you stay alive. Also, don't fly in a straight line, especially when you're running away from somebody who's pursuing you. You definitely want to make for your safe point as quickly as you can, but throw a bit of movement in there as well, so that you aren't making yourself too easy a target. Lastly, don't fly too close to the ground until you're more experienced, but also don't fly too high as you'll stick out like a sore thumb. Practice finding a good middle ground where you have cover like cliffs or buildings or mountains so that you can duck enemy lock-ons when necessary, but you don't need to hug the ground as you'll be more likely to fly into a tree or a cliff or a rock when you do get engaged by other aircraft. As you get better, this will become more of an option to you, but just starting out, your safety net should come from the ability to stay on the outskirts of a fight. Focus on maintaining a proper distance while still getting some fight in as well. If this video has been interesting, helpful, or entertaining, please feel free to like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel, and I know that there was probably a whole lot that I didn't touch on, so feel free to share your helpful advice in the comment section below. What methods did you find most helpful when you were learning how to fly? Thanks very much folks, Rail signing off.